Okie dokie, let's do this. Can everybody see me? Can everybody hear me? Welcome to another webinar. I see a yes in the chat, which is awesome. Okay, um, welcome uh, to another webinar. As uh, promised, today we're going to talk about how to make control groups and control pages within uh, Compass. It's going to be another Compass webinar. And um, as I said, today we're going to talk about how to make control groups and control pages. Um, because imagine that you find yourself uh, in a venue like this one. This could be an imaginary example. This would happen to be the Walt Disney Concert Hall in Los Angeles. And imagine that you have a venue like this where you have your main PA left made out of uh, leopard elements, uh, main PA right made out of leopard elements, uh, subwoofers living left and right on the stage, 900 LFCs with JM1P infills on the top of it, uh, a bunch of uh, front fills. Then there is uh, rear fills, which can be seen over here. There are side fills. There are many loudspeakers uh, within this single image. And what if I wanted to control all of this using a very convenient control page? Well, that's going to be the focus of today's webinar. Um, here we see that same picture as a background image. And notice that we can uh, mute our entire system if we decide to do so. Or we can only mute PA left or only PA right. Um, maybe I have reason to mute the front fills. Well, then I can do so as well. Maybe uh, today's guest engineer would like the subwoofers a little bit louder. Well, then we're going to drag that fader. Maybe the front fills are too loud for his liking. Well, then we're going to drag that fader and attenuate those front fills a little bit. And this is super convenient in such uh, a situation. And this is just the beginning. This is the tip of the iceberg. You can make this as uh, complex uh, as you would like. But this is what the control pages, the user-defined control pages, allow you to do within Compass. And today we're going to explore how to make such a user-defined uh, control page. So that's going to be the focus of uh, today's webinar. But before we start, um, as always, let's talk briefly about the Zoom platform that we're using uh, for these webinars. So there we go. Um, it appears that I'm not sharing my screen. Operator error. Apologies about that. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm sharing my screen. So in front of you, you are expected to have a window not unlike the window that you see over here. We encourage you to uh, ask questions, and in order to do so, uh, there's two ways of getting there. Um, please click on the chat button. Chat button will open up a window on the right-hand side where you can see your fellow participants as well. Enter a message in the bottom of that window, address the nation, which is everybody else that is joining us today. Or if you happen to see a friend, fellow colleague, family member, you can also uh, address a message to that person uh, privately. We've been doing this many times now, so I'm quite confident that everybody uh, feels familiar with uh, operating the uh, Zoom platform. That being said, we're also being joined by viewers around the world through the Meyer Sound User Community Facebook group. And that means that they are joining us on the stream, hopefully. Welcome to you as well. Uh, the user community right now has over 8,500 members, and uh, that number is, is rising. So welcome to those uh, people as well. I want to um, change my camera a little bit and then we're going to continue with the uh, presentation. So uh, let me share my screen once more, which I'm doing. Excellent. Okay. So welcome to those people as well. So um, we talked many times about the Myerson Precision Toolset and Compass is one of those pillars in our workflow uh, to deliver turnkey solutions from design to deployment, including signal distribution, power distribution, and RMS. And today we're going to talk about another property of uh, the Compass control software, which are the control groups and control pages. So again, I made a checklist. I have my pen ready, making sure that there's nothing that I uh, forget. Um, uh, and that um, all topics are uh, being covered. So um, we've talked already several times uh, about Compass, and that means that there are several webinars that you can watch on our YouTube channel, Thinking Sound. 
and you can watch webinars that lead up to what we're talking uh, talking about uh, today. So there's the Compass Global View webinar, which is uh, which is conducted both in English and uh, Spanish by fellow Meyerson colleague uh, Oscar Barrientos. Then a while ago, we did the introduction to Compass, which I did myself in English, and Hugo Acre, Arke, Hugo Arke did it in uh, Spanish. And those are all for you there on YouTube to see. The uh, address is uh, Thinking Sound. That's the channel. That's the YouTube channel. And there you can find those webinars that all did with uh, Compass. Okay, so control pages and control groups. What is it all about? It's basically a very sophisticated system that allows us to manage multiple channels across multiple Galaxy devices. Don't necessarily have to be multiple Galaxy devices, but it could. Um, and we can control those and manage those through control groups and control pages, where a control group can be thought of as a user-defined subtop within a group's parent top that consists of one or more channels across one or more Galaxy devices. And those control groups can then be assigned to a subset of Galaxy controls in a user-defined control page subtop, which lives within its own controls parent top. And upon successful design of such a configuration, uh, control groups and control pages can be operated from within those respective uh, parent tops, as we saw at the introduction of today's uh, webinars. Webinar, singular. Okay, so what are groups? Well, groups basically allows us to select multiple channels across multiple Galaxy devices. So maybe I have uh, two, three, four Galaxy devices in a specific venue. Uh, and I want to group inputs or output channels across those devices in one convenient group so that I can control that group uh, any way I see fit. So it allows us to select one or more channels across one or more Galaxy devices. And um, in the group stop, we can create those groups, we can configure and edit those groups, we can even operate them already over there, as we're about to discover, and we can manage our configurations, which means that we can store them and recall them uh, later if we desire to do so. Now, if at any time you want to ask a question, um, please make sure to use the raise hand feature in the Zoom chat window. That way I know that you're about to ask a question and then I will try to answer it to the best of my ability. Besides the groups uh, top, there is also the control stop, which lives next to it. And that is where we can assign uh, certain controls uh, of our choosing that will have uh, control over these groups that we created uh, before. And um, in the control stop, we can configure those controls, we can do the layout, um, and we can operate them. The controls that you and I can add are a gain, mute, delay, um, EQ bypass, an EQ plot if we desire to do so, metering, U-shaping, which is our proprietary multiband EQ, which we discussed during uh, Introduction to Compass webinar, which you will find on YouTube, and we can introduce images. Uh, from within that same control stop, we can also uh, uh, save and recall multiple as well as individual control pages and more important we can operate them from within that top as we saw uh, before during the introduction. So let's talk a little bit about the workflow. It starts with making groups. We have to, First we have to combine one or more channels across one or more Galaxy devices in a single group which we can then assign to a control. So um, my friend Oscar, my colleague Oscar, made a little flowchart over here and it says, okay, the first thing that we need to do if we want to make use of groups within Compass is we need to activate the show control group tops, control groups top. Um, we will see that in a while. Once that option has been activated, once we have access to that particular top, then from within that tab, we can start adding input and output groups. So input groups only house uh, input channels can only contain input channels, whereas output groups uh, can only contain output channels. Um, so that's where we're going to define our groups. Um, and then once a group has been created, we can start adding devices, Galaxy devices, to those groups and select any of the channels, input or output channels, on those particular devices. And that will then be a group which lives as its own top within that parent uh, group top. If you need more groups, rinse and repeat, which means that we go back to the top of the flowchart and we're gonna add more groups until we have all the groups uh, that we need. 
If we have no need for additional groups, then we're done. We've made all the groups that we need. And that means that we're now free to continue with making control pages. Now, control pages are slightly more involved. Again, like groups, we start in the top right corner. It starts by first activating that show control pages top because by default, as we're about to discover, that is not shown. However, once that top is made visible, we can add a custom control page, which we can give a name of our choosing. And once the control page is there, we can start introducing controls such as gain, mute and all the things that we saw before. We can adjust their size and dimensions. And then the next step would be to configure them. Uh, and assign the actual groups to those controls that we would like uh, to control those very groups. And for all we know, you need one or two controls, in which case you're done. And then you would go to the so-called operate mode, which now allows you to operate these controls, engage mute buttons, disengage mute buttons, change levels, play with EQ. Uh, it, gets, uh, it gets very, uh, very rich, very fast and... Pff, you're almost tempted to say the sky is the limit. Um, but today we will get a good sense of, of the possibilities. Uh, if you need more controls, rinse and repeat. Go back in the flowchart, uh, add more controls and configure those and size them uh, to your heart's content. Uh, maybe you want separate control pages. Maybe you have a venue with multiple rooms where you would like each room to have its own dedicated control page. Uh, well, then you go all the way to the top of the flowchart and start adding uh, more user-defined pages. That is, in a nutshell, um, is the process, and now we're going to start doing that, which means that I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a while because there are several things that I want to reset here so that we can start with a, uh, that we can start with a clean uh, slate, and that means that I want to undo the work that I showed you at the beginning of this webinar. I want to start with a, cre uh, a clean slate, okay? I want to go to the defaults, yes. Same over here, I'm going to go to the defaults, that's all good. And I don't want to see that. Okay, I'm ready to start doing. So, today we're going to, we're going to, I'm not going to do the entire page that we saw before, uh, the page that we saw in the introduction. I'm not going to do the entire reconstruction of the page, but I'm just going to show you within the time that we have, I'm going to show you how to get there. And uh, I'll, I'll do one half of the room, and then surely you will be able to appreciate how to do the other half of the room. So this is the example that I would like to do. It's an imaginary example, um, but uh, it, this is only a placeholder to uh, communicate to you the um, concept. So for this room, I want to make a control page that gives us control over all these systems and uh, subsystems. So let's go to Compass. As we discussed in the introduction to Compass webinar, by default, uh, Compass starts in this top. I will make it a little bigger for now, but I need your real estate later. And the first thing that I'm going to do uh, so that you and I can see clearly what is going on is that I'm going to change to day mode. That way we have, uh, we have uh, a bright background, a light background that allows us to see um, what, what it is that I'm doing. Now, if we go to our keynote temporarily and we go to the instructions, you notice that the first thing that we should do is activate the show control groups top. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. In the Compass software, there is a button over here that says, in the preferences, it says show the control groups top. And if I do that, we notice that another group uh, top appears over here, and that is the very top, the parent top, where we make our groups. So we want to turn on that because by default it's turned off. If I reset to defaults, okay, you see that it's turned off. We're back at night. Okay, let's make this a little bit larger for now once more. So by default, okay, it is turned off. And we want to do the same for the show control pages top, which is where all the future control pages will live. So we need to turn those on in order to gain access um, to those specific tops, which is the group top and the control top. Okay, um, today's system, 
uh, I've made something. Um, I've made something, which is uh, which is imaginary, just as a placeholder. And for all we know today, it consists of uh, four galaxy devices. Imagine that we have one galaxy device living at the front of house, which is our ingress point. This is where the console feed is provided. And maybe you have a guest console and all of that goes into a galaxy 408, 408 living in the vicinity of front of house. Um, we would most likely use that specific Galaxy device to uh, go into the digital digital domain to go into AVB. And then through the AVB ecosystem, we would distribute our signals to maybe a, a Galaxy 816 for house left and a Galaxy 816 for house right. And maybe we need another Galaxy for all the fill loudspeakers. So in today's system, we have uh, as much as uh, four Galaxies to play with. Um, let's bring up those galaxies in a second window so that we can see the control page and the, um, the overview map um, side by side. So here's what I'm going to propose. I'm going to say show all these uh, processors in a secondary window. I don't want to see them in the primary window, which is the default setting. Notice that right now we have four tops living over here within the in the primary window which is a front of house main PA left main PA right and fills but today I have reason to have those processors living in a dedicated secondary top and that means that I'm going to check this box which allows me to see a secondary window containing those four galaxy devices which is my 408 at front of house galaxy for main PA left galaxy for main PA right and the fill loudspeakers. The only reason that I've enabled the demo option is that we see some meters moving just to uh, trigger our imagination. So I have all these Galaxy devices now living in their own dedicated um, top. Okay, I'm going to move this out of the way for now and um, uh, we're in a good place. We made sure that in our preferences that we see both the controls groups as well as the control pages. We've turned that on and now I really need that uh, real estate to show you everything that there's to see. If we want to use control pages we first have to define control groups. So in order to do that let's go to the groups parent top. And in the groups parent top we can add input groups, which would be a group of input channels. We can add output groups, uh, which would be a group of output channels. We can save those configurations and we can recall them and we can even merge uh, several groups together. So why don't we start with maybe the most common functionality you would expect within a large system, which is maybe one button that mutes the entire system, right? Uh, something goes wrong, you're in a panic, you want to mute the entire system, it would be convenient if we could to do so, if we could do so with one click of a button. So here's what I propose. Why don't we add an output group? And we're going to call that output, output group, we're going to call that output group mute all. So the job description of that output group is to mute all output channels with the click of one button. And now we need to assign our Galaxy devices to that particular group and then select the output channels that we would like to mute. Before we do that, let me see a little bit, you know, let me show you a little bit more uh, of the infrastructure that I had in mind. So here we see the ingress point at front of house. This is our front of house processor. It has uh, four inputs, left, right, sub and fills. Um, it's not uncommon that somebody might want to have dedicated control about all of those channels. And um, from that galaxy at front of house, we go to our satellite galaxies, which is main PA left, main PA right, as well as fill loudspeakers. Okay? We go from our front of house galaxy, we go to those satellite galaxies through five outputs. This is a simplistic example. Output one would go to the main left, Leopard system, which is our satellite galaxy house left. Output 2 would go to the galaxy house right, uh, which is uh, custodian over the right array in the illustration that we saw before. Um, we have a sub 
feed that um, has to go most likely to both uh, satellite galaxies left and right and maybe we want to have dedicated outputs for our infills and front fills respectively so that is the intake point uh, for our signals at front of house now I'm going to look only at one instance um, one instance of our uh, satellite galaxy so this would be could be very much could be the uh, house left galaxy now in the design that I chose today there are 14 leopard loudspeakers living on outputs 1 through 14 where leopard 1 would be the speaker in the top and leopard 14 would be the speaker in the bottom and for those that pay careful attention to the picture there were also living two uh, 900 LFC elements uh, on the edge of the stage uh, again I've made those guys uh, separate output channels which means that we have one that is living left and the other one is living left left so that you know that it's living to the left of the other guy and that could be one side of uh, of the house house left house right would of course be a mirror image again uh, outputs 1 through 14 would be the right main PA consisting of 14 uh, leopard elements and then we would have again two subwoofers sitting on the stage which would be right and right right uh, respectively um, Oscar Barrientos did a wonderful um, webinar called Compass a Global View about global linking um, but in order to appreciate that be sure to watch that particular webinar on our YouTube channel Thinking Sound and finally we have a we have a um, dedicated galaxy device for all the front fills because if we go back to the uh, to the example then uh, we see that we have uh, eight front filled loudspeakers distributed along the edge of the stage um, there are the two subwoofers left and right that we discussed earlier and on top of there there are two JM1Ps those would be the infills infill loudspeakers for the people downstairs uh, in those uh, first couple of rows so let's put all those infill loudspeakers and front fill loudspeakers let put those on their own uh, dedicated galaxy device well here they are um, these would be the infills the JM1Ps where infill left left is the outer one of the left pair whereas right right is the outer one of the right pair and left and right are the inner ones um, of those pairs uh, living left and right of the stage um, we have eight front fills and uh, we're very fortunate to have each front fill on its own output so that is eight outputs in total starting with left 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 which is the outer left one all the way to right 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 which is the um, outer right one and those are our fill loudspeakers so now we have four of these galaxy devices and this is what we would like to control using our control pages and the first thing that we uh, suggest to do is why don't we make a single mute all that allows us to mute all those outputs well I already made an output group I named it mute all and that means that we now need to populate it with the galaxy devices whose output channels need to be muted so let's add a device row device row brings us to a drop down menu and there are my four galaxy devices to choose from I don't want to mute the front of house processor outputs but I do want to uh, mute the outputs of PA left and here we see on the PA left galaxy which is an 816 we see the 16 outputs on that particular processor and I want all these output channels to be selected so that I can mute them in the future using one button these 16 output channels are now part of this group which we called mute all of course I need to do the same for house right so I'm going to add another device row which in this case will be the house right the main PA right processor again I'm going to select all output channels which are the 14 leopards as well as the two subwoofers sitting on the floor underneath it and then finally what we also need to add are the output channels that uh, have our fill loudspeakers in them so let's add our third galaxy which is the one that contains all the fill loudspeakers and there we see our four infill JM1Ps as well as all the front fills these are all the output channels mind you that I want to be able to mute in the future with one click that would be an output group it lives on its own top and it's called mute all 
So we've made our first control group. Now let's add this group and assign it to the control page. In order to do that, we need to go to the second top and that's currently empty. So why don't we start by adding a new control page? Notice that we have a grid in front of us. That grid allows us to uh, position and, and size and scale our controls. But why don't we call this page my control page? Okay, for lack of a better description. So let's give that a name. Now, in the example that I did today, I found it very convenient to use a background image. So why don't we say in our editor, let's set a background image. I already prepared, prepared that background image and there we see the same background image that we saw at the introduction of this webinar. So that's just a placeholder. That is just for me to position the controls that we're about to design so that we can have control over this uh, system which consists of uh, several galaxies. So why don't we start introducing that big mute button that allows us to mute that group that we made before containing all output channels that we might want to mute. And that means that we have to add a control type. And over here we see a drop down menu of all control types that are available. As I said before, there's gain, mute, delay, EQ bypass, EQ plot, metering, U shaping and an image. Right now we want to introduce a big mute button that allows us to mute all outputs at once in case of a panic. So I set it to mute and all that's left to do is say add control. And notice that there's three operating modes. There's operate which allows us to operate the controls once we're live, once we're in session. But there's also the option to change the layout and then there's the option to configure those controls. Let's start with the layout option, which is by default, and let's position this mute button somewhere where we can see it, a nice big fat mute button that allows us to mute all outputs in the group that we made before. Okay, so I'm happy with the dimensions. I can change the height if I desire to do so. I can change the width if I desire to do so, but let's put it roughly over here. Now I would like to configure that button because it's not configured yet. And in order to do that, we abandon the layout mode and we go to the configure mode. And in the configure mode, there are several things that we can do. We can, for example, label this custom control and maybe we can call it uh, mute all. We can have that label appear or not by simply saying show that label or do not show that label. This is a little bit redundant because as we're about to assign our control group this is the only control group that we've made so far which contains all the output channels that we want to mute with the click of a single button if we assign that output group to this particular control then we can also show the name of that group and notice that I intentionally made the label the same as the name of the group so showing it twice would be somewhat redundant we want to show the mute and um, let's have a look at this first and see what this does by abandoning configure and now go to operate. There we have our first custom control. It's called mute all, which you can see in the title over here and it controls the mute all group. Now in order to show you that these are not one and the same, let's go back to configure and say this is the title of this control and then if we go back to operate you will see that this reads the title of this control but the blue bar shows you the actual control group that has been assigned to that control so this is where you can be very specific in the example today I chose not to show the label because I make the labels the same as the name of the groups that is just my workflow so now we see that this is the mute all and currently no outputs have been muted and uh, let's see if we can confirm that by making this window uh, a little bit smaller we're gonna make this window a little bit smaller let me uh, clean up some of that background okay let me clean up some of that background okay so let's make this window a little bit smaller so that I can show you our processors uh, which I um, made in a separate window so that we can see those side by side. Now in terms of real estate this is going to be a little bit challenging um, 
but right now you should be able to see our custom control page and you should be able to see the three processors th whose output channels we're about to mute which is the uh, fill output channels main PA right as well as main PA left okay this is all using virtual galaxies but that doesn't make this exercise futile all of this can be stored and recalled once you commission the actual system if we are in operate mode and I were now to press this mute button notice that all the outputs are muted if I click it again all the outputs are unmuted if I click it once more all the outputs are muted not just on main left but also on main right obviously unmuted and if I click it once more it is muted again and the same is true for our fill loudspeakers right now they're muted but if I click the button once more then they're unmuted okay so there you see our first custom control which allows us to mute all output channels across three galaxies in this instance at once in case of a panic so there's your first example um, for those that were paying attention you might have noticed that there's also the option to show unmute in which case you have two buttons to choose from it's muted or it's unmuted it's muted or it's unmuted rather than clicking the same mute button twice you now have to choose between mute and between unmute okay so um, that is a matter of preferences okay so let's keep that button because right now we mute the entire system at once but maybe I want more granularity maybe I want more control over individual elements so why don't we make a mute button for uh, main left infill left subwoofers left as well as the front fills and then surely you'll be able to appreciate that you can do the same for the right hand side and that means that we have to add groups we have to add more groups because this mutes all the output groups I could also say mute all outputs okay which would probably be even a better descriptor but now I want to add another output group this will be a uh, mute uh, main left okay that could be all output channels main left that I want to mute I've given the group a name and now we have to populate it with the uh, relevant devices once more which in this case is going to be main PA left and with one click of a button I want to mute the entire line array which is output 1 through 14 and I think uh, if you say let's mute the left side that you also might want to include the subwoofers with that but that's again um, a matter of preference let's do the same uh, for the subwoofers which um, means that I'm gonna make another output group which is gonna be uh, let's say uh, mute mute uh, subs left okay that could be another output group again I have to populate it with the relevant galaxy device which could be uh, the one that has the left and right subwoofers and um, let's do so for the front fills or the infills correct me I'm sorry uh, let's do so for the infills as well so let's add another group add another output group and let's call that uh, the uh, mute infill left group now we need to add the galaxy that has contains those output channels which is the fills galaxy and the um, infills left would be the first two channels on that particular uh, galaxy and finally let's add a output group which uh, mutes all front fills at once and add the same galaxy device for that one apologies which is the fills galaxy and assign all the front fill channels to that particular output group so right now we have five output groups in total and we can keep doing this uh, all day long so let's go to the controls and assign a couple of more uh, of those mute buttons which means that we have to go to layout once more um, I'm gonna add another mute control 
So let's click on that control. Uh, that is going to maybe mute the entire uh, house left PA. Um, I want to add another control, which is going to uh, mute the subwoofers. I always like these, you know, this is just a matter of preference. I always like them to somewhat cover the relevant system. Let's add another mute button in anticipation uh, for uh, muting those infills that live over there. And let's um, add another mute button to um, mute all those front fills with one click. And that would probably live somewhere in the vicinity of the front fills. Okay. So I've added all those mute buttons. Now we should configure them. So we're going to abandon the layout and we're going to go to configure. So in configure, we probably want to assign the group that that button should be, uh, should be um, muting. Because um, we want to mute with this one, we want to mute main left. So that is the group that we want to assign to that control. Um, again, I have no reason to show the label uh, because the label is of your choosing. Okay, This does not have to be the same. As we know from before, this does not have to be the same. Uh, I don't have a reason to see that. Uh, I do want to see the name of that group, which I chose uh, very carefully. So that will mute the main left. Uh, same can be done, of course, for the uh, subwoofers, in which case we want to mute the subs left output group that we made. I have no reason to see the label. And we also want to do that for the infill left. Again, I have no reason to see the label. And that means that we are now pretty quickly, we're already in a shape that we can mute the main PA left, we can mute the infills left, and we can mute the subwoofers left. What have we forgotten to do? The front fills. So let's go back to configuration and assign the front fill mute group to that control. I don't want to see the label because I already addressed that in the naming convention of my groups. And let's go to operate. So within a matter of minutes, we've already made a custom page that gives us control over half of the room. Um, let's see that in action. Let's see that in action. Let's make this screen a little bit smaller once more so that I can bring up my uh, secondary compass window next to it. Here we see the secondary compass. Um, currently, it's still showing the front fills on the fills processor. So let's see whether it works. Let's see when we mute the front fills, whether only the front fill channels are being muted. And the answer is yes. We can see that if we hit that button, that all the front fills are being muted, but the infills are left alone. Let's see whether this is also true for the, uh, for the, two, uh, for the two front fills uh, on the left side, which are channels, uh, sorry, infills, which are channels one and two. Let's see when we mute the infills, whether only those two outputs are muted. And again, the answer is yes. If I click that button, only those outputs are muted. Now, in order to see whether our main PA left on its own galaxy is being muted, let's move to that top, which shows us the overview for that particular galaxy device. And let's see whether um, muting the main PA left mutes outputs 1 through 14. And the answer is yes, it mutes output 1 through 14. Let's see when we mute our subwoofers, whether only outputs 15 and 16 are muted. And the answer is yes, outputs 15 and 16 are muted when I click that button. So now you see that we have control over multiple out cha output channels from within one user-defined control page. And of course, you would do the same for the uh, right-hand side. Would you recommend using Meyer processors with speakers from other manufacturers? Somebody is asking uh, in the chat. Well, that's somewhat of a rhetorical question, right? Because uh, I'm tempted to say yes, <laughs> but um, whether everybody, uh, uh, whether everybody uh, agrees, that remains to be seen. Um, but there's no harm in doing so. Okay, so 
there we have our first uh, mute buttons. Now, um, what else would you maybe want to see uh, in such a custom page? Maybe you have a, a visiting guest act that wants to know whether his signal is uh, reaching your inputs. Well, then it would be convenient to have some meters here that show me uh, any activity on the input channels of the front of house Galaxy device that is our ingress point for the um, left, right, sub and fills, um, fills uh, uh, feeds. So if we want to see meters for that, we have to define a group for it first. And that means that rather than adding an output group, this time we're going to add an input group because we want to see the meters of the four inputs on that particular Galaxy device. So I'm going to click Add Input Group. And let's call this uh, front of house input meters. Okay, this group. And that means that I need to assign a Galaxy device, which is going to be the one living at front of house. It has eight inputs, as we saw in previous webinars. And I want to select all those input channels because those are the meters that I want to see in the custom control page. So that is my input group, and that means that that group has now been defined and populated. Let's go back to our control page. Let's go to the layout mode. But this time we're not going to add a mute button. This time we're going to add a meter. I've chosen the control type. Let's do add control. And by design, that gives us meters that uh, run uh, vertical, as we're about to discover. But let's configure that first. There is the um, meter control. Let's make this a little bit larger for you to see. There is the meter control. Okay, and let's look at the configuration. Uh, let's look at the configuration options. So here we go to configure. And uh, we can choose between vertical meters, which run up and down. And we can choose between horizontal meters, which run left to right. First thing that we need to do is assign those input channels to this particular control, which is the input group that we made, which has the input channels, the front of house input meters. And notice they're already there. Uh, by default, they are running horizontally, but if you have reason to see them vertically, then you can do so as well. Uh, I don't use labeling because I label my groups, and that means that I'm happy with this. But maybe uh, in, in line with the example that we saw before, I would like this to live maybe uh, somewhere over here. And now I have, from within one page, I can see whether somebody is presenting any signal to the inputs at the front of house console. Okay, so there's no reason to go to uh, that particular uh, Galaxy top. I can all see this from within a single, uh, single view. Uh, what else did I show you in the example? Well, you know, for, for whatever reason, you might have a guest act that wants a little bit more subwoofers. Um, we want to put some constraints in that, but he wants a little bit more low frequencies, or maybe he or she wants a little bit less low frequencies. In which case, it would be nice to have a fader, a fader that allows us to uh, increase or attenuate the level of all subwoofers, which means that we first have to make a group that contains all those re uh, relevant output channels because we want to change the output level. So we're going to add an output group and this output group is going to be the, um, let's call it the uh, LF level, uh, the level of the low frequencies. And that means that we need to populate it with all galaxies that have subwoofers connected to them, which is my main PA left and of course my main P8 right. So now I need two galaxies because I have outputs 15 and 16 on house left as well as outputs 15 and 16 on house right and I want all of these to be controllable from that single fader that we're about to make. So that's my low frequency level um, or sub level which is maybe a, a more appropriate term or LFC. Okay let's call that sub level or subs level plural and let's go to controls and that means that we go to our layout once more this time we're not going to add again a mute or delay this time we're going to introduce a um, we're going to introduce a gain so I've chosen the gain control type I'm going to do add control add control and there we see our fader 
Uh, in layout mode, I can change the size of that fader. I can make it bigger. I can make it smaller. Uh, in the example of uh, the introduction of today's webinar, I put it roughly somewhere over here. Okay, put it roughly over here. And um, there we see that fader. Currently, it's not been configured. Uh, it might be sized and positioned, but it's not been configured. So let's configure it first. And that means that this fader should control the levels of the subwoofers those four output channels which we assign to that group. So let's select that group. I have no reason to see the label. And uh, I want you to make this, I want you to be able to appreciate this a little bit more. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for now, just so that you can see all the configuration options that are in here. Okay. Because notice that we can choose between a fader and an encoder. Okay. That depends on how much screen estate you have. I like a fader, but if you prefer encoder, eat your heart out and then very interesting and very <laughs> very wise to do is that we can put constraints on how much gain you can add and how much gain you can take out now if you want your systems calibration to somewhat survive after somebody increases the level of the subwoofers you might want to build in some restraint because the way it's configured right now, if we were to go to operate, then I can boost all subwoofer outputs by 10 decibels or attenuate them by 90 decibels. I have no problem with the attenuation. It's the 10 dB boost. That is maybe a little bit too much spinal tap. So in order to uh, put constraints on that, we can also say in our configurations, you know, maybe we want the degree of freedom to be no more than plus three decibels and no less than negative three decibels and by setting the max gain and the minimum gain we have now put constraints and the user cannot increase the subwoofer level by more than three decibels or cut the subwoofer level by more than three decibels okay if you have uh, if you want to give a little bit more freedom you could also uh, turn this into plus six and negative six, in which case the user could go all the way to plus six or negative six, but you would put constraints on the amount of gain change that can be introduced. So let's make this fader a little bit um, more um, in the way of the uh, example showed at the beginning. And uh, let's put it roughly over there. Now, interesting fact. We can now change the level of those subwoofers, and I would like to. S I want to. Uh, I want you to see that as well in action. So let's make this window a little bit smaller again, and let's go to one of the Galaxy devices that actually has subwoofers living on them, which are over here, outputs 15 and 16. Notice that the level currently reads zero. Everything is at zero at this point. But if I now operate that fader, which we just created, if I raise it by three decibels. Notice that the output level went up by three decibels as well. And if I lower it by three decibels, notice that the output level dropped by roughly uh, three decibels as well. So I can change the level of those outputs by dragging the fader. If you want more granularity, you can also click in the area above the fader, in which case it will go up in one dB increments. Or you can click below the fader, in which case it will go down by 1 dB increments. That is one way of doing it. If you want a more coarse correction, you can also click on any of the numbers living next to the skill. So if I were to click on the plus 3, fader jumps directly to plus 3. If I click on the plus 6, fader jumps directly to the plus 6. Same is true for if I click on the negative 6, fader drops immediately to uh, negative uh, to negative uh, six. So that is all uh, very, very convenient. In the example, I also ended up doing this for the infills and the front fills, but you get the idea. And uh, you can make this very rich, you can make this very user friendly. Uh, what we might want to do is add a couple of output meters because it's nice that uh, a user can increase the subwoofer levels by six decibels but we do not want him or her clipping the output channels on that particular galaxy device so maybe it is prudent to accompany this particular fader with a set of output meters 
and that's going to be the same group. I don't have to make another output group for that because it uh, it applies to the same four output channels that have my um, uh, subwoofers connected to them. And that means that rather than adding a gain control type, I'm going to add another meter control type. That is the type that I want to add. I'm going to add an instance of that. Okay, and um, let's change the layout. Uh, I think I had the meters living to the left of the fader last time I looked. Okay, and let's configure that control first. So, I have no reason for a label because it will show me the level of the subwoofers. Okay. Again, we have the option to choose left to right. I chose uh, vertical bars because it doesn't change the colors. It just removes the numerical values next to it. But um, it's pretty sure that two of them are left and the other two of them are the right side. Um, whatever you prefer best. Um, I made the me meters uh, occupy a little bit less, uh, less real estate. And now we can operate it and now we see those four output channels uh, two for house left and two for house right and uh, if I were to turn this up you know I would uh, expect to see more clipping and if I were to turn them down I would expect to see less clipping had these been real galaxy devices and not virtual galaxy devices are uh, running in uh, in virtual mode so you can do this all day long if you want to offer mastery queue over the entire system we could do so we could go to our groups we could go uh, and make an input group um, which we technically already have but you know let's make an input group and call it master EQ uh, input okay or input master EQ if you don't what if you don't want somebody messing with your system at the processor level but rather do it globally so that you can reset it with a single click we could do an input mastery queue we would have to add the relevant device which is the one living at front of house we would have to apply the mastery queue to all those inputs and that would be the input control group for the mastery queue that means that right now we want to introduce an EQ plot in this case and we're going to do add control and that gives us a plot and we want to put that somewhere you know in a logical place in a logical place I'm already struggling with uh, screen estate as you can see so let's put it over there maybe let's configure that uh, we want this to show us the input mastery queue no label um, okay and let's do operate and then over here we see the mastery queue if I want to operate that you know we can go to those processors and all of that will be shown I need to go to the secondary top apologies about that need to go to that uh, secondary top which I've lost there we go so if there is any input EQ living in this uh, living in this guy in those four input channels if there's any input EQ uh, for all we know somebody is doing something with paramedic EQ you would expect to see it in that control page and we can add controls to that as well so you can make this very rich you can make this very involved uh, but it is also a measure of uh, security you can only grant access to uh, predefined parts of your system uh, and minimize the uh, room for operating error um, so there you have your your introduction to control groups and uh, control pages uh, yeah you and I can possibly think of many applications uh, as I was preparing this webinar a colleague pointed out that uh, maybe you want uh, have a festival situation where you have uh, several inputs dedicated for uh, guest consoles guest mixing consoles and you want to make one convenient page where you can unmute unmute one guest console at a time rather than having to go through that particular galaxy where you can unmute one guest console uh, at a time uh, then this would also be a very convenient uh, way of doing so uh, so yeah the sky is pretty much uh, the limit sooner or later you might want to save your work so how do you save your work well let's save our groups first 
If we go to the group stop, then in the top of an editor, there is the option to save all control groups. So if I want to save all those control groups, which are several, there's mute all outputs, mute main left, mute subs left, mute info left, mute front fills, uh, the front of house input meters, the level of the subwoofers, and the input master queue. If I want to save all that, just click save all control groups. And I would call that uh, my control groups for all I care. And then all of that is saved. The same can also be done for the control page. If I'm happy with this page, all that's left to do is go save all control pages, including the current one. And I might want to call that my control page or whatever works for you. And then all of this is saved and can be recalled even when the virtual Galaxy devices are being replaced for actual physical Galaxy devices. So all of this can be also done as homework in preparation for the commissioning of a um, system. So uh, that gives you a first impression of what can be done, what can be done using groups and controls, which only leaves me to show you one more feature. Imagine that I no longer want to see this editor, okay, because I've done all my configuration, I'm happy with the way it looks. That means that there's two ways of hiding the editor and the editor by the editor I mean the portion that we see over here. If I no longer want to see this portion that I'm now trying to highlight with a rectangle, if I no longer want to see that portion, okay, all that I have to do is double click on the parent top. If I double click on the parent top, the editor goes away. If I double click again, the editor reappears once more. Or by simply clicking on that small up pointing arrow. If I click on that up pointing arrow, the, the editor goes away. And now your control page is as large as it's ever going to be. Um, uh, and that means that nobody can mess with this because you cannot change the operating mode because all of that lives in the editor, which is now hidden. And the same is true for groups. In groups right now, we see the editor. Again, if I double click on the group stop, the editor goes away. Because um, you might not be aware of this, but from within the group stop, I can already do a lot of control, even before I started uh, making a, a dedicated control page to begin with. Because a notice, for example, that in my uh, mute main left control group, I can still make use of the linking options, okay, which are in there. Now, you might not be familiar with uh, these options, but in that case, I encourage you to uh, go to Oscar Bardiento's Compass, a global view webinar. But I can still choose all those inputs or outputs, pardon me, all those outputs at once because it's in a link group and I can mute them already from here within the groups page. And I yet haven't, you know, we've already made our custom control pages, but even making groups is already a, uh, is already a worthwhile exercise. And um, also here I could change the gain of that group uh, already from within the group stop without making the custom controls in the control pages. So groups on their own already are uh, super useful. If you want to see the editor, double click the top. If you want to hide the editor, double click it once um, more. So that pretty much uh, concludes uh, the introduction to control groups and control pages. And everything that we discussed today was done uh, virtually. That is to say, was done within, you know, with using virtual Galaxy devices. So you can practice this. You know, Compass you can download for free as we saw in previous webinars. There's nothing that keeps you from playing with this functionality until you feel comfortable uh, operating both uh, the groups as well as the controls. You don't need access to physical Galaxy devices for this. All you need is a computer and the Compass control software. And then you can already start playing with this and get a feeling for uh, how how convenient this is for uh, particularly controlling larger systems with multiple out and input channels across uh, multiple galaxies. Okay, that makes it uh, seven o'clock.
which means that um, this concludes, as far as I'm concerned, the introduction to control groups and control pages, uh, by no means uh, rocket science, and that means that uh, I have a little bit more, a uh, uh, little bit more household notes, which is that um, before we go to any questions, which is that um, this is going to be the week of intelligent DC. Um, so I would like to. Um, show you a little uh, introduction to that just to whet your appetite um, so that means that I want to go to the keynote okay which is over here and of course as you've uh, grown accustomed about us, this webinar um, that you just saw will be uploaded um, after this session will be uploaded to the YouTube channel uh, Thinking Sound um, which is uh, where the webinars have uh, been watched uh, 14,000 times by now. And um, I'm very excited to inform you that this Wednesday, fellow Meyersound colleague Rahul Samuel uh, will uh, do a case study of Intelligent DC, which are uh, not self-powered loudspeakers, but have an external power supply for which there is uh, very many interesting applications such as uh, cinema, but also shopping malls and uh, boardrooms and so on and so forth. Uh, very excited about that. And then uh, after the case study, Intelligent DC, um, John Menito is going to give us a, uh, is going to do a guest lecture, is going to give us a global perspective of the vast application possibilities for the intelligent DC products, whether it is uh, in the service industry, such as a restaurant, or whether it's in a theater, such as uh, the example that you see on the right-hand side. So uh, this is going to be the week of intelligent DC, and of course our Mexican colleagues are going to do exactly the same in uh, Spanish. So um, tomorrow, Oscar Barrientos is going to talk about control groups and pages in uh, Spanish. Finally, uh, we had our first um, a la carte on demand session last Friday where we uh, discussed uh, power scaling at your request. And that means that in two weeks from now, we're going to have the next a la carte session. Uh, the on demand session is going to be May 8th. And the three options that you can choose from are Montreux Jazz, M Noise, and Roskilde the Festival. If you want to make your choice known, please, uh, please complete the poll that lives in the Meyer Sound Users Community Facebook group. It's in the announcements. That is where you can make your preference known. And then uh, once uh, the majority is clear, uh, we will discuss the topic of your interest in two weeks from now. That concludes uh, all the household notes as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so thank you for attending uh, today's webinar. And that means that I'm willing to you know, spend a couple of more minutes uh, asking any questions uh, you might have. So I'm not prepared to ask the question that we have over here. Can Compass 3 import a background image or is it only version 4? Uh, I'm not prepared that question. Uh, I would have to look into that and then get back to you. Um, maybe one of my fellow colleagues that are joining us in the session can attest to that. Whether Compass 3 allows you to import a background image. I'm not prepared to answer that question. Okay, any other questions um, regarding control groups and control pages? If not, then um, thank you for being here and hope to see you Wednesday when we're going to talk about Intelligent DC. Stay safe and healthy and best to you and your loved ones. Bye-bye.